we are beginning to ask questions why we're here. Especially in civilized countries and, be, and countries that has money. Because you know, we know that this money doesn't belong to you. You're going to go and the money will stay. How do you feel about this? Every course I do, I am, I am discovering more about me as well. And, and the people at the same time, you see, that is, uh, has been my experience. You do courses for you or for them? Because tomorrow I will come to your great course. Yes. You make for them or for you to discover yourself? If you're a bad person, I'm good. I'm a good person. I'll get all the admiration and you get all the shit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, uh, I don't want to go into politics. Like now, Putin is the bad guy mm -hmm. and Ukraine is a good guy. How do we know this? Welcome again to Mandaki Television. Thank you for the invitation. It's always wonderful to see you. Thank you. It's enough space for you? Yes, but where is the audience? Do you want the audience? <laughs> Do you need the audience? Uh, we have on, uh, on, uh, in the YouTube anyway, so. Would you prefer to be people here and to applaud you? Uh, what kind of question is this? I don't know. <laughs> Do you? Mm, I'm afraid a bit. <laughs> Do you think this hall is for our ego? Uh, yes. And do you feel comfortable here or more comfortable to your home? I'm comfortable because my ego is not uh, happy or sad. There's chairs, but there's no people, so right in the middle. Why are we afraid of people sometimes? Af afraid of people? Yes. What, what do you mean exactly? Because, as I told you, um, I could be a little bit afraid when I see a lot of people around us. Um, yes, because we want them to like us, which is impossible. So, uh, if, if we are attached to people like us, to like us, we will always be afraid. But a lot of people like us. This a lot of people like you. Well, this is what we think. It, it doesn't matter if they like us or not. I think the question is, do I think, uh, this is for me, is life enough or I need more? Y you see that? Uh, mm -hmm. is, is it enough to be alive or I need much more? Your answer um, uh, makes a connection mm -hmm. with my audience on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Because in the last days, a lot of people are writing to me, Stefan, thank you. Mm -hmm. What for? Thank you for many. <laughs> so you are a kind of hero in my uh, community. Menis is a sacred word, a word in the dictionary, because mm -hmm. everybody loves Menis. How do you feel to, to, to be a hero? Because you are a hero, and yes. I am like a patient. Have you ever seen an uh, English patient, the movie? Actually, yes. Actually, that film, my voice is in it. Your voice? Yes. Metaphoric uh, voice, or? No, no, my real voice is in that film. In English patient? Yes. <laughs> Some of the actor's voice is actually my voice. I didn't know this. Because I used to make lots of voices for films before, years ago. So, what a coincidence. I didn't know this, <laughs> because I thought about uh, that fact. English patient crashed the plane down in yes. the desert. Yes. Where did I crash down here? Because while I was getting closer to you, I thought that I don't know why I'm coming back to this man. Why? Because he is the hero and I'm like a Romanian patient, not English patient. <laughs> so and why do people love this this situation? I think that the way we have interviews together, uh, it is quite uh, unusual. I was trying to explain that to you earlier before we start. Many interviews I, I did for televisions and many places and uh, when a person is asking me questions, they are thinking for the next question. And uh, they are not engaged. And I think maybe the audience uh, feels something by our engagement together, mm -hmm. which is the connection we have when you ask me the questions and I am answering you. 
uh, is something very important here, I think. I really don't understand why do I risk a lot uh, in this situation. I try to understand what I don't understand. Every time I come back and I sit on, into the chair, maybe with the same questions sometimes, mm -hmm. maybe with new questions, but I don't know why I do this. Why you risk? Yes, because... But, but what is the risk? I risk to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. This is uh, this question, uh, I think, uh, has many dimensions. Let's put it in a different context. The people who end up in difficult relationships, yes? And they keep going back to the same relationship again. And again and again. In the same relationship? <laughs> again. Okay. Th this is not exactly the same because we don't have painful relationship. But if we use the same context, the idea, these people who go back to the same relationship, uh, there is part of them still lives in a world of humiliation. The people who go on the stage and speak in front of a lot of people, the presenters and speakers, taking a huge risk to stand in front of a lot of audience because anything can go wrong. So they are driven by the desire to be great, but also the fear and the pain of being humiliated that they want to go back to it again, because it's not over. It's still alive in their unconscious mind. So it, 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 it's quite magical because their pain in the past, in the difficult childhood, whatever happened to them, has driven them to be great. You see? Mm -hmm. So at the same time, they are making a difference to the world, like you are, yes? And I think this is part of the evolution. They are hurting inside as well. But, but the, the attention and the love they get from the people mask that pain for them. But they know somewhere deep inside they actually taking the risk because you cannot stand in front of people, a lot of people, or do things like you do if there's a, an element of something can go wrong. And maybe somebody will criticize you or can say the wrong thing or, or a crazy person come in the audience and attack you or something. So that's a risk we have to take. You see, but can you see both? There are two opposite elements at the same time. I want a lot of admiration, but I am putting myself again in the same situation that I have suffered from all my life because it's not finished yet. And I, I see this as uh, something divine, actually. Like uh, people have suffered a lot in their life in their attempt to heal even the wrong way they help people at the same time. Last year I told you that I want to save people by making these kind of films. Yes. One year after <laughs> is the same. I think I'm, I, I still want to save uh, people by making these kind of films. Do you yes. want to save them? This is for me something It took me... What's your drive in making this? I will tell you. I think my initial drive, uh, I have two things mixed up in me. The, they are the same, exactly like I'm saying to you. Since I was a child, I, I knew and I felt I have something important to do. But I also suffered a lot. And uh, it seems to be the weakest point that we have in our life, the weakest point. For example, uh, the things we can never do that's so difficult for us to do could be the key for our success. It was absolutely impossible for me to do what I'm doing now. In fact, I was taken out of school because they told my parents he will never learn anything. It's impossible. I had a learning disability. I couldn't, and I, I didn't even know I was at school or not. And I didn't even know how to ask questions in the classroom. So for me to be in the position to teach people or to teach university in England, it's not even my first language. It was something I need to reincarnate 10,000 times to do something like this. But so I was driven to, to prove 
to the world that I am not that weak person, but I had it anyway. Can you see the contradiction? Mm -hmm. So I think that may apply to you as well. Like uh, you, you are driven to make a difference, but you also at the same time compensating for something. But I think this is like a magical formula. You think you are a weak person? It's, no, weak is not the right word. Not able. I was not able. But my, let's say, I call it disability is not the right word. My disability was the fire that has made all this happen. So if I was born and I was able to learn, I was fine at school, I'm not sure if I would have achieved that much. I'm not sure. I'm, I thought about this a lot. But I was not conscious in the beginning that this was the case. But later, slowly, because I have been working with people for almost 30, more than 30 years, and my journey was working on a stage with a lot of people for a very long time, I'm also discovering about myself. I no longer need the people like in the beginning because I, I was not conscious like I am now. Every course I do, I am, I am discovering more about me as well. And, and the people at the same time, you see, that is, uh, has been my experience. You do courses for you or for them? Because tomorrow I will come to your great course. Yes. You make for them or for you to discover yourself? There is no me and them anymore. How come? There is I no. don't understand. This is what I have uh, arrived to. When I'm working with them, there is no them and I anymore. I'm not a teacher anymore. Yes, we, you are. I feel you are the teacher. This is what people think. And this is when other people, other people in my place take advantage of people. How can be, I, I, I really strongly advise people not to use this word anymore. There are no teachers anymore. How, how can I be a teacher if I eat and sleep like everybody else. You are also a student, not only a teacher. There is no students either. We are here now, we are equal. Yes, but you know uh, more things than me, or this more is, than the others. Uh, this is only knowledge, yes? And knowledge has no value whatsoever. Mm. Uh, you see, I, I have five university degrees. Yes, and I did them out of fear. I wanted, because I was afraid not to be good enough. But when I finished all these things, yes, I think I was better in the beginning. But the purpose of these degrees for me has given me some confidence to stand. But they are not the work. That's not the work. The work is much more than that. I encourage everybody who come to the seminar actually not to follow me whatsoever. I am like this, okay? I, I use this in the course. I'm like a tour guide. I have seen things I want to show to the people until one day I will leave them and they will continue, like guiding them to see something. We better not to follow anybody. Do you think somebody who is not intelligent enough <laughs> yes. is happier than, uh, than an intelligent one? The person who is not intelligent is happier? Is happier? Yes, it is, yes. So a person uh, who is not intelligent enough is happier? Yes. Why? <laughs> tell you why. So you are sad? <laughs> no, no, not necessarily. Many years ago I used to think maybe it's better if I never learned anything and I work in a factory and I go home, watch television, and sleep, I go second to the factory. People are unconscious, don't feel anything, but life hit them later, you see. They hit them, life, if you're conscious, it's not easy, because you're gonna start questioning what life is all about, what we're doing here. If you're unconscious, it, it's, it feels easier for us. But you and I, we cannot afford to be not conscious. It's not our 
is we're not that's not what we're here for it's not our destiny <laughs> yeah yeah you can say you can use that word. It's, it's not what we're here for because i met a person not very conscious yes and i saw uh, he was he was happy yes yes he was smiling he was joking well you see I, i was driving the car and uh, i was very serious and very yes. concentrated we start life by being unconscious we become conscious there's the final stage to become unconscious again to become unconscious again but consciously it's really hard <laughs> you, you understand what's the method and when it starts no when you finally surrender to everything around you and you don't try to achieve anything many people are in a stage looking for the truth looking yes they will only find it when they stop looking and when the moment comes when they stop looking they found it and they will not know they have actually found it and they find peace this final stage when the search is over yes see you're not going to find it because you're looking because it's like uh, having a purpose or a goal in your life you have you have a desire yes yes the nature of desire the nature the word desire in it means i want more so if i desire enlightenment or the truth i will always want more but if i say i want more peace this uh, it's correct or not no how can you have want more peace once you have the peace you will want more you see what i mean you don't have you 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 cannot have the end end as a goal you told me before this <laughs> it looks to be new <laughs> yes the goals the goals and the goals a friend of mine yesterday finished the dreams notebook do you yeah. remember when we yeah, spoke yes, about course. dreams notebook yes of course <laughs> did you change your mind <laughs> i because because he told me yesterday that it's a huge step yeah in uh, in his life now because now he told me now i know what, what i want uh, he said now i know what i want yes yes in it's very year, clear for me in great in one year time you will meet him and he will tell you now i know what i want. <laughs> <laughs> Another year is it now I know what I want. Yes, but if he uh, wouldn't do yes. the dreams notebook maybe he was in uh, fog and night. Of course, but uh, th- this is the process, you see. He's in the process. But this is not the end of the process. Mm-hmm. You see the the more you have the more you want. What do you think is the most important word? in the world in the life one word one word yes. is is gratitude gratitude and uh, why did you name your philosophy essence because i was sitting in the sauna one day day dreaming and the word came to my mind so i used it mm. <laughs> nothing really i didn't have a business meeting and coaching mm. and leadership seminars and consultant to come up with what just the word came to my mind okay. I will rephrase yeah. what's the essence of gratitude to celebrate your existence hmm. yesterday i made a list yeah with questions yeah. for you and near this list i uh, i did write uh, the gratitude <laughs> things i'm healthy i'm uh, yeah. conscious uh, yeah. i have money yes. etc <laughs> it's good or bad to make list <laughs> unfortunately unfortunately <laughs> it's bad no no i'm not going to say good or bad you cannot teach people gratitude because you talk into their mind you cannot it's like this you will never i don't think you will ever appreciate what we have if we never had the time we didn't have anything do you understand what i mean if you really know poverty you will appreciate money 
If you don't know, you will never do. People now in this life, especially Europe, living everything, living life with a very big lack of gratitude. And this is a big issue for us. But yes, but you don't have this ability. You have to start yeah. from somewhere. You start. You have to start training. Yeah, no, no, not necessarily. It depends on the person who's supporting you. If I talking to you about gratitude now, if I don't have gratitude, I will never convey it to you. Impossible. It has to be transmitted without teaching you anything. But what we're doing is we are, I see people teaching people in courses to be grateful. How can I teach someone to be grateful when I am not grateful? It's the presence of somebody grateful, you will be grateful. In the presence of someone? Yes. Without that person tell you how to be grateful. So you need the person? Yes, but the person is not a teacher. It's a presence. This can generate gratitude. How? I don't understand. How can generate gratitude? Because when you have money, you have to celebrate that you succeed in making money. Yes. You have to celebrate that you uh, uh, became so strong and so intelligent to can generate money. Okay. And after you generate money, uh, you don't celebrate that you have enough money in your pocket. So no. how could I become more, more grateful for this? Okay. How do you feel having no money in your pocket now? In control. In control. And if I take it away from you, how would you feel? As long as I have enough money <laughs> <laughs> here, no. Uh, no, it's still uh, comfortable. And, uh, no. Do you feel at peace now? No, it's not about the if, peace. Uh, let's slow, slow down. How you feel yourself now while we're talking together? Mm. You feel okay? Not very, very comfortable, <laughs> but I'm trying to be. Uh, but, but you feel okay, yes? Yes. If this money is not in your pocket, how would you feel? Mm. As I told you, mm. as long as I have, uh, as long as I have enough money, yes, I, I continue to be comfortable. Okay, uh, the, the question is difficult because my, my 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 experience is this: most people who have money are less happy than people who don't have money. It's completely strange. This. Mm. Actually, you know why? Why? They're actually very disappointed. Because when they didn't have money, they thought if they have money, they will be okay. But they have money and they realize they are the same people. But nothing happened. So if I change my car, I'll be happy for three days. After? You want a new one? <laughs> you have two options. <laughs> to be disappointed or get a new one. The same with money, you but see. Of course, of course, the, I don't want people to take this literally. Of course, money gives you more uh, choices. And money make your life easier. But it will not change you. It will not make you feel at peace. But what do we want in our mind to buy with money? Uh, I think the question you ask yourself, not me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> peace, freedom. The, the, the world we live in now is coming close to something that causing trouble for us. We are beginning to ask questions why we're here. Especially in civilized countries and, be, and countries that has money. Because you know, we know that this money doesn't belong to you. You're going to leave it you're going to go and the money will stay. How do you feel about this? I was just asking, <laughs> 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 what about my money after I die? Yes. <sighs> What's going to happen to this money? I ask myself this question all the time. If I spend it, 
It will not make much difference. I can buy new clothes, new car. Maybe you want to give to your children? They will have it anyway. And, and finally, what about money? What about your money? Yeah. You are a millionaire. Yes. What about your money? Haunting me. <laughs> really, Leave it to I'm me not then. <laughs> really, not. haunting me, yes. I'm not joking. Because I know spending it, it doesn't give me any joy. I started, I started now when I go to places and I see people who don't have money, I want to give them money in the street and things like this. Why do people become crazy? The people with money become crazy? Because before they have money, they thought, if I have the money, I will be okay. But yes, but it's not a reason to, be, to become crazy. Of course, because they, these people thinking, we, we discussed this once before, they thinking, remember in one of the interviews, they thinking of becoming, becoming. We, all, we are always living on becoming what I'm going to do tomorrow, Where, what I'm going to achieve next, what is your next project after this interview, you? Mm -hmm. What's next? We are not living now anymore. We, we are not here anymore. We are, we are we're not being, we're becoming. I'm in love with starting new projects. Yes, this is a desire. You see, you can start many things, but without the fear of becoming. Of becoming what? Famous, liked, successful, happier. This is the final stage. You can do everything like before, but without this anxiety, it has to be good. I have to succeed. I now beginning to walk in the seminars like going home. It doesn't matter anymore. I will go, speak, I go home. Before, years ago, I wanted to make it perfect. I want to look at notes. I want to make this. Uh, no, no, all gone. All gone. If people walk out of the seminar, I'll go home. So what? It's the last time when I speak about money with you in my <laughs> podcast. <laughs> but I have only one okay. question, the last question. Okay, about money? Yes. Okay. What do you think is the difference between a millionaire and a billionaire. Money. <laughs> <laughs> the, the amount of money. I think it's about the detail, yeah. short details. Only the amount of money, What? there's no difference. It's not about abilities? The billionaire is the same as millionaire, the same as you and I. There's no difference. Mm -hmm. Why are you asking that question, actually? You want to be... So, billionaire? So, so, so I'm a millionaire, but uh, you want to be in my dreams I wanted to be a billionaire. <laughs> okay. I'm sure that uh, nothing will change. Uh, if in this moment I will have three billions, my life would be the same. Yes, for sure. And I was interested in your opinion about this. Do you think it could change me? Yes, it will. You will, you will be able to say I'm a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about one... Uh, oh, it's very important for you. You will not, you will be in a higher ego level. If yeah. I am billionaire, I would like to be you, here with you. You will be talking to Elon Musk and all these kind of people. You know, be talking uh, not to with me. Menis. Menis is not good for me now. <laughs> Elon Musk, Bill Gates. Yes, th then they will meet you then. So the level yeah. is so the changing. Level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the level is in our mind. You will go to the level, yes. Why we want to go to the next level? It's a bad thing to go to the next level? We just because now uh, I'm the next level. <laughs> Look at me. I'm we, well dressed. Yeah, yes, In the we, last podcast, I was not like this. Okay, we, we actually talked about this. It is this, the same issue again. We, we cannot... Uh, um, you know, I struggled with this a lot before. We cannot be satisfied with what we have now. If I want more, it means life is not enough. This is not enough for me. When it's enough? When somebody sits next to you and you feel you don't have to do anything anymore. 
to make them love you or to impress them. This is very rare because most parents now cannot do this anymore to their children. Do you think parents want to impress the children? No, no, I don't no. Think this. No, they cannot be with the children because the parents want more. So they are the parents with the children, now all of us, there's no exception, maybe very few people, of course. The parents, when they're sitting with the child, they're thinking of more for themselves. They, there's no doubt they love the children, there's no doubt. But nobody is able to be with somebody anymore. So now this child will grow up and want more and more and more. Do you remember I said in one of the uh, interviews, you cannot, you cannot have enough of what you don't really need? Mm -hmm. the, the desire for more, that means I'm not satisfied. But who do we want to feed? It's our uh, inner child? Uh, I, I would not go to these terms very much. All I would say is, for me, I have never in my life experienced a person being with me before when I was young, just for me. I never, I didn't even know what it was. That means if nobody can be with me for me, Watch what I'm going to say next. I cannot be here for me. I have to be more. I. You see? And when I get more, I have to be more. I cannot stop. Would you like to speak about inner child? Because I read a book uh, written by Musa Nabati. And uh, he says that our inner child become a ghost in mm -hmm. our Life. Yes, yeah. You see, I studied a lot of psychology for many years and uh, I started to have this uh, reaction to naming things because people, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure this person is doing a great work. When people read these things, they start identify part of themselves to things they don't even know what they're talking about. So it's, it's quite scary actually. And then we are, we're lost in words and because here is the most difficult part I will tell you. It's a phenomena. When we are facing things that we don't understand, we name them. And you see, and we're st speaking about the names. And that gives us a, a, like a short comfort. Why we can't forget what we don't understand? We desperately need to understand. But everything happened to you. You are the result of things happened to you before you understood anything. Everything happened to you. The, the foundation of your personality was formed before you had an intellect whatsoever. The first year. Yeah, before anything. So they are all experiences not only experiences, the experiences have gone, but they left you something with a reaction. So we are contaminated by reactions to old experiences. So now people are trying to do, trying to go back and name things and discuss them and write books about them when they only had a reaction. You see, like we are in relationships by reactions. No, we don't have any conditions at all. But psychologists are so lost to, 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 to give names. And you see, I worked for the health service for many years in England with psychologists, doctors, psychiatrists for many years. And we used to have patients coming in, talking about very strange things, confused, difficult. And what we do, we give a name to their condition, yes? and we write to each other. So I write to another doctor, see this condition, blah, blah, blah. Doctor read it, describe the medicine, but the person comes back after three months, nothing happened. Then we send them somebody else, and the other person, yeah, we can add another condition. We don't know what is this condition. We had a system 
called in, in the language of the doctor DMS3 something. We ask questions, yes? If the person get three or four right out of ten, then the person has this condition. What, what does that mean? We don't know what we... That person can get other three and have the same condition. So we are lost in, in names. But we need to look at ourselves. Yes, but it, it doesn't matter the yeah. name. Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, we feel that we are followed by uh, an energy. It doesn't yes. matter if it's inner child or something yes. different. Yes. Someone is following us. It's near us. This is the it's condition. like our sh shadow. <laughs> <laughs> we have to find them for this condition. <laughs> and to write. <laughs> and I will give you a prescription after that. <laughs> Nobody's following us. Our inner child. <laughs> I'm telling the, you. There is no inner Believe child. Believe me. The, the, there is no inner child. You're an adult talking to me normally. Where is the inner child? There's no inner child. There's no such a thing. It's a fashion. It was a fashion. I'm for being a, long a child. Time. No, it's a fashion for a long time. I see people talking, saying, my, my inner child is suffering, my inner child. Where is he? Where, where is your inner child? In our soul. Uh, our soul? Yes. You, uh, he, he or she is crying, is screaming. Yeah, now? <laughs> yes, yes, now. Maybe I'm here because of my inner child. Maybe, I, I don't know. You know better. <laughs> you are the hero. <laughs> you there don't feel you have uh, uh, someone young or uh, a child in you? No. I have a reaction to the past. That's in my, let's say, nervous system. Even that doesn't exist either, but I have to use it. I have a pattern, chemicals pattern. Yeah, chemicals, they are activated by a similar situation that happened in the past. That's what we have. For example, if I lived in deprivation, didn't have any food, hunger, pain, yes? And I see people um, wasting food and getting angry and they have everything, my pattern is activated my unfairness and injustice activate. That's a pattern. And will continue until, until I find peace with my past deprivation. There is no inner child in none of this. The, the chemicals have been activated at a certain situation and something similar come later. It will activate the same chemicals in the brain. By the way, all this neuroscience and all this kind of thing, we know very little. But every year we know a lot more, very fast, extremely fast. We know very little. And all these names and every these complications, let's say something that may be opposite than I said before. We may need these names just to feel safe, we know what we're actually talking about, so we can describe something. We have to put something. Mm -hmm. But it's much more than we think. It's, it's, uh, uh, this writer says that as long as you don't count down this voice, let's say this voice, or mm -hmm. this inner child, or this ghost, uh, you don't have uh, the chance to be... Is, I don't know if I can put my... Uh, some explanation to this from what I think, okay? Um, there is a... A consciousness in us, yes? When, when we experience something outside, yes, there is something, a consciousness that make it connect to the body. You understand? This is, psychologists call it a nervous system, mm -hmm. but I don't like that either. So when something happens, it becomes conscious in you, yes? So there is something transform the world into your awareness. Mm -hmm. Is that okay so far? Yes. This thing that make the experience into the body, for the body to feel what happened outside, this is very high intelligence. Yeah, that makes us aware of what happened outside. 
yes? This intelligence in us was violated by our parents, our life, our school, and what happened to us. When my intelligence is violated, yes, then it will have to protect itself so not to be violated. So we are living in this protection so we don't be violated again. You see what I mean? You could now call it voice, you can call it inner child, you can call it anything you want. But this is how I see it. We are both violated because not many people had perfect life since they were born until today. Uh, it's not our fault. We, we are not victims today. And actually, we are victims because we didn't decide this. But uh, what I meant is not the fault of the people did it to us because they are violated themselves. So the, the, the time has come now when we awaken into this, into this and, and notice that we are violated as people and how we can be okay in ourselves. How are we going to deal with that? And this is kind of what I do in the courses, actually. Because if I don't know I am violating, I am acting something out of fear, if I don't know this, we know it now intellectually, you and I, but not really, not really. It will actually go away. You see, when I see something hurting me so much and I react, yes, then I am not conscious, actually. I am in the reaction. You have to to know to know react. Like when you're angry, you need to know that you're angry. You understand? Mm -hmm. People don't know the moment of anger. People don't know. But after, they know they are angry. You see. Next time you're angry, you stop and say, "I am angry." Stop. I, I am now angry. It will go away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> not in my case. <laughs> When I'm angry, I have to get revenge. Yes, because the, the revenge is giving you is giving you something wonderful. Revenge? <laughs> yes. What? It's so wonderful. It makes you feel right. Mm. <laughs> Not right, but uh, easier. <laughs> of course, you now you are right after all, and the person who violated you are wrong. And you were never given the satisfaction, they are right. So you win, you win. Mm -hmm. See, if, if I am angry with somebody, I win, because I am finally exerting my influence that I am good, and you're not. <laughs> Why do we want <laughs> to have in front of us Bad guys. You need bad people in life. Bad people, yes. So we become the good people. We are not good or bad, that's the problem. You see? Bad people serve the world more than good people. If there's no bad people, we can't be good anymore. But bad people yes. have to compare with Good people. With, exactly. No, with other bad people. <laughs> no. To be a little uh, yeah, better. Yeah, but if you compare bad people with bad people, you compare good people with good people also. So everybody compares you with see, everybody. If you're a bad person, I'm good. I'm a good person. I'll get all the admiration and you get all the shit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, uh, I don't want to go into politics. Like now, Putin is the bad guy mm -hmm. and Ukraine is a good guy. How do we know this? They're actually the same. Hmm. Kim Jong-un is the same with uh, uh, King... Uh, I don't know who King Jong-un is. King Jong-un is the same with King Jong-un? No, the same with King So, King Jong-un is the same with... Who is King Jong-un? <laughs> King Jong-un. <laughs> Uh, he's the leader of North Korea. Uh, no, yes, I thought so. It's the so. same with King Char uh, Richard? No, yeah. Richard. King Charles? Charles. <laughs> 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 King, John king John Prince or the king Charles. Of, let's say the king of North Korea, yes. The king of North Korea, yes. He's doing a great job. Oh, it makes I have us to feel, cut this. <laughs> it I'm makes afraid us to... feel right. No, he's just a crazy... He is our, he's our creation. 
He's our creation. No, he's not my creation. He's a crazy guy. He's our creation because we make him important. Why are you talking about him? You're advertising him to the people. Oh, okay, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. I'm the bad guy. <laughs> so in conclusion, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. you, now people will go and search for him now after this interview. Who is this? Yes, he's the light in the yeah, world. That's right. <laughs> so now we'll have more followers because of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody won in this equation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So. You, you need, we need to keep away from these people. How do we understand that we have in front of us a toxic person? Because you stand in front of them. <laughs> if there's a toxic person in my life, that means I'm toxic. And we want to avoid this person. Yes. But something if, in us... Yes. Uh, if you are okay, the toxic person cannot come near you. And if they come, they will go away very quickly. I, I use this metaphor. You leave your door open, somebody will come in. You close your door, but you don't judge the toxic person. I have not to judge? You leave them alone. You leave them alone. You don't say they're good or bad. Just you take care of you. The problem in the world today is very simple. Everybody, I say it all the time. I think I need to say it every day to everybody. Everybody is trying to fix another person. And if you know that you have a toxic uh, partner? Yes. Okay. There is but, no toxic partner. But you still feel a lot of love for him. Perfect. What should you do? You need to look at the person who loved you and was toxic when you were a child. Somebody loved you and hurt you. And it's repeating itself. Your love and hate, this love and pain are the same in your consciousness. This is what I meant by violation. You have been violated by somebody loved you and violated you. So this is what happens. So, so the toxic person that you love is teaching you that you have unfinished business. So in this case, we should go back in the past. And you, told, you told me it's not recommended to go and to go and to go into, uh, in the past. No, I didn't say that exactly, no. You need support, support, not teachers, support. But should we forget the past or not? You cannot forget, how can you forget? To try to let it be. Okay, let me clarify because uh, you're, you're asking questions that can be actually quite good and provocative at the same time. The past is finished. You are caught in the reaction of the past. You see the difference? Yes, the but past sometimes is not it's there. an obsession to analyze the past. Yeah. Be conscious of your reaction to the past. Okay, let's suppose you understand your reactions. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. You don't understand your reactions. Yes, I understand, but it's nothing. No, you think it, you don't understand it. If you understand it, yes, you will be terrified. I could never accept myself as a person who's violated and abusive and angry. I could never take it. You have to, have so, you have to be so strong. You, you really have to be so strong to see that part of you with love. I know a person who made a huge list with mm -hmm. all his uh, traumas mm -hmm. in life, all his traumas, and uh, he calculated, he, yeah. he, he did right everything yes. since uh, he was conscious. Yeah. Three, four years, five years. This list is avoiding the trauma. It's avoiding? Yes. If you're free, you don't like... But don't he write. discovered, he discovered a lot of traumas if in his Path yeah, if way. you discover his trauma, he will not tell you. He will not write a list. 
he didn't tell me the, 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 the content of the list. That Roma is not written. It's not a book. Yes, but it's not important to know uh, the events from w the past. When I do courses, I tell people, if you write, we'll take you out of the course. You will see tomorrow. What, what, what you don't write, you forget. Eh? You want them to forget? You, you, you want to write. You want to write. The moment you write, you're in your head. You're in your intellect. That's not the, the treatment. Okay, how many books written about relationships? Millions. Has anything changed? Mm, really? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting worse. You know why people read in books? I will say it tomorrow in the course. The books in your hand under your control. You turn the page as you want. You see? You control it. You're dealing with something they cannot control. The question is, can you accept you as a violent, angry, traumatized person? Would love. That will be the subject of our next meeting. <laughs> <laughs>